Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele. This is your Cornerstone Community Church Service for, of course, August the 11th. And uh, we're going to open with a word of prayer. So, Father, thank you today for this day. And thank you, Lord, for what we're going to be sharing today from the Word of God, the songs that we're going to sing, and as well, Lord, the wonderful message that you're going to bring and the prayers that we're going to offer. And we ask your blessing now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, just a quick reminder, of course, that we have an in-person service today. It starts at 11 a.m. We meet at Cornerstone Hall. That's number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert. Our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. And we'd love to have you join us for that service. Well, we're going to start our song off with, uh, of course, Rock of Ages, and uh, we're talking about one from Rita Balash. There is no rock, there's no God like a God. No other name worthy of all our praise. Rock of salvation that cannot be moved. He's proven himself to be faithful and true. that song. And now we're going to do um, an old favorite of mine. Haven't done it for a while. And it's simply called The Battle Hymn of the Republic. And I love this song because the simple fact is it reminds us of who the Lord is and what the Lord can do in our lives today. And uh, I was looking for the music and uh, <laughs> I seem to have misplaced it. There it is. All right. Here we go. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the great the wrath is stored. May his truth is faithful, lightning of his terrible sword. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah.
well, that is a great place to find ourselves, especially as we look at our Word of God today. So, Father, over the next couple of moments, we're going to be looking at your Word and what it has to say to us today. And Lord, we ask your blessing upon it now, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've been looking at, of course, the Upper Room Discourse, where Jesus is giving his last will and testament, and his final instructions to his disciples. In verse, uh, in uh, John chapter 15, verses 22 and 23, he says, If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father as well. So Jesus reveals part of the reason why he came. He came not only to save us from our sins, but also to point out what is wrong with humanity. And of course, this became a great sticking point with many people of his generation. For example, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus would talk about, for example, anger. And he would say, listen, you've heard it say that you should not be angry. He says, then he goes on further. Then he talks about, about the fact that you shouldn't just say, you know, you fool or raka. He says, the anger in your heart is the very thing that, of course, can put you into the danger of hellfire. Jesus would take it a step further. And the reason why he would take it a step further is because God had further things to say. So that's why um, one of the things that Jesus did, people did not like his honesty. They didn't like him exposing, for example, their secret sin. Jesus said, for example, he says, that which is done in secret, when it comes time, will be shouted from the housetops. And he was there basically to tell them, listen, this is what God expects. This is who God is. Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. And if you see the Father, you see me. Men love darkness rather than light. They would rather continue to live in that self-made persona, that self-made uh, image that we have. There was a study uh, f several years ago in Canada about the aspect, or I should say, the subject of honesty. And 90% of Canadians believed that they were honest all the time. And they also said it's the other guy that is dishonest. We have this idea that we are all wonderful people. And yet Paul pointed out in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. One of the realities that mankind has been doing right from the very beginning is we have been trying to capture paradise loss in our own strength. That was the sin, of course, of Cain. Cain knew what was required, but he chose rather to bring what he thought God would want. And the problem was when it was rejected, he became angry, not just with God, but with people around. The one thing that will happen to us is that when we are exposed to our sin, it either um, we try to cover it up, we try to deflect it. We try to blame somebody else for the way that we are instead of owning up to what we've done. That is one of the reasons why David was called a man after God's own heart. You see, David did not try to deflect it. He did not try to say it's Bathsheba's fault that this happened. She shouldn't have taken a bath out there on her terrace. You know, uh, he didn't blame, you know, the time of the year or his mom or his dad. He owned up to what he had done. That is called repentance. God, worldly sorrow is you're sorry that you got caught, but you would do it again if you had a chance. But godly sorrow says, I am truly sorrow, sorry for what I've done. 
True repentance is not just changing the mind. It is changing lifestyle. It is becoming obedient to the truth. Remember, they shall know the truth and the truth shall set them free. Jesus said, I came, he said, to expose. He says, I had not come and spoken to them. He says, they would not be guilty of their sin. You see, Jesus Christ was an amplification of the word of God. Jesus, in John chapter 1, verse number 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So here you have Jesus now showing people also as well who God is and what God expects. Jesus was the perfect role model, the perfect mentor, the perfect example for us today to follow. And he says, now they really don't have any excuse for their sins because they have seen a perfect example of what God is like. And that should also be our um, motivation to be able to serve the Lord. You know, there was a Years ago, there was a fellow that came to my church when I was a young pastor. And uh, he came to me and he said, what is the greatest thing that we should be doing? You know, what's the number one thing? I didn't know what to say. I said, to be like Jesus? And he said, you're absolutely right, to be like Jesus. In his book, Charles Sheldon, he wrote, of course, in his steps, the premise behind that, and of course it became a catchphrase, what would Jesus do? And that's something that we should be thinking about. How would Jesus handle this situation? What would Jesus say in this situation? How would Jesus act or react in this situation? And that's a good place to start. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to give us that example. And we should be modeling our lives after Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus also said, whoever hates me hates my father as well. So basically, the religious establishment of that day, they actually hated the Lord. They hated what he, they had wrapped themselves around the law of God, the Ten Commandments, the 613 ceremonial Mosaic Law, and they had added on to it. They loved the idea of the law. They loved the presentation of the law in their lives, but they had forgotten that there was an individual behind that law, and there was a reason for that law, and that was a covenant between God and his people with a redemptive substitute. And Jesus Christ had come to not only fulfill the law, or to he didn't come to do away with the law, he came to fulfill it. Jesus Christ also came to bring a brand new covenant, not just with the Jews, but with all mankind. So when Jesus hung on the cross and said, it is finished, he gave mankind a brand new start. But the problem was religion loves the substance, but it doesn't love the individual who is behind the law. Because religion, as it says in the World Book Encyclopedia, is man reaching up to God, whereas Christianity is God reaching down to man through Jesus Christ. So Jesus exposes mankind and our faults and our failures and our sins. And then because of that, it not only hates him, but also his father as well. You see, religion becomes a substitute. It becomes a form instead, of course, of a relationship. So let's avoid that and let's love the Father, and let's love Jesus Christ. So, Father, today, we thank you for the wonderful message of the cross. We thank you for Jesus Christ, who is, of course, the personification, the also as well the incarnation of the Father 
in human form. Father, thank you for that today. And Lord, I pray today that we will build our relationship with you. That Lord, today it would be our number one goal to, of course, have a deepened and more personal relationship with you. That is what our prayer is today. And we ask it all now in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to pray for you today. Two scriptures that I want to leave with you to think about today. And that first scripture is, of course, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19. that says, our God will supply every need according to his riches and glory. So, Father, today, thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. Also, as well, we have that wonderful scripture, Philippians, I should say, 1 Peter 2.24, that says, by your stripes were healed. It is, of course, a repeat of Isaiah 53, verse number five, that says, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement that brought us peace or punishment that brought us peace by his stripes were healed. So Father, today, whether it is provision or healing that you bring, we need that right now. And we thank you that, Lord, you, of course, are our provider and our healer. And we're going to receive it right now. In Jesus' name we pray amen. Well, of course, I want to be able to sing our last song today, and we're going to sing uh, More Love, More Power. That is a great way to close our time off together. More love, more power, more I want to thank you so much for joining me today. And again, I want to give you an in-person service to uh, in-person invite to our in-person service. It starts at 10, 11 a.m. today at Cornerstone Hall. That's number six Tache Street in St. Albert. Our doors open at 1045 and our service starts at 11 a.m. And we would love to have you join us for that service. God bless you and thank you for joining us today.